Sebastian Marx, welcome back onto my podcast. Thank you for having me back. Yeah, nice, to, nice to have you back here. Um, when was the last time you were on this show? Do you remember? I don't. Remember. Was it around uh, COVID time? Did we do it virtually? I, th I think so. I think we did a sort of a, a lockdown chat episode, okay, yeah. kind of thing. But um, I think maybe even at the end of that episode, we said that we would do this. So it's yeah. been at least like two years that we've been thinking about this doing this. This episode is two years in the making. Yeah, exactly. It's been in, in the making for two years. Yeah. So how anyway? How are you, Sebastian? What if what what have you been up to? I'm I'm good. I'm still uh, performing stand up comedy mm -hmm. uh, as my profession. Yeah. In French and in English, in Paris and abroad. And uh, and yeah, so making videos, sometimes doing videos, and uh, that's pretty much. And being a dad, which is would, that that's already a lot. You've got three kids. I have three kids. Yeah. Three. Three. Yeah. Is that uh, that's too much? It's, is it? Yeah, it's three too many. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, it's quite. Uh, what? How old are they? Uh, ten, seven, and four. Okay. Yeah. Wow. What so a handful. It, it is a handful, but it's good. It's good. Does Does the ten year old help out with the four year old? It's starting to. Well, we're in a good period. We're in a sweet spot now mm -hmm. because no more diapers, no more pacifier for the young one. The old one is the old, eldest is not a teenager yet. Mm -hmm. So we have this little sweet spot of like two, three years before all hell breaks loose. Yeah. Well, we're coming out of the baby phase, you know, no, right. no more toilet trained is good. You know, we're having conversations with our four year old. So that's all good. Yeah. So we, yeah. we're out of the baby, you know, no more stroller. Mm -hmm. no, you know, we can put the kid in the car. We don't need to fold anything. He's mm -hmm. going, you know, he's. He's going, it's great. Yeah. He eats by himself. You don't have to cut everything. Like he's, <laughs> he's becoming a person. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, the eldest one is, even if she is showing signs of uh, adolescence already, she's not, you know, full on. Yeah, you got a couple of years. Yeah, we have like two years. Kicks in. in the sweet spot. Okay. All right. Um, so anyway, nice to have you back though. So to give you a bit of time out from all of that craziness. Yes. Um, That's so why I'm here. Well, just well, to get away from it. <laughs> just that? That's the only reason? We also agreed a theme for the episode. We did. Which is what? What's the theme that we're going to talk about? Y Yiddish. Yes. I I, has, I stuttered. Y Yiddish. Y Yiddish. Yiddish. Words in English that come from, from Yiddish. Yiddish. Yes. Okay. And there are a lot. There are a decent amount. So why have we chosen to talk about this? And what is Yiddish? What is Yiddish as well? Yiddish is a, a language, if I can say it's a Jewish language, or language spoken by the Jewish people mm -hmm. in Eastern Europe. And I'm specifying this because there are two kind of groups, general groups of Jews. One is Sephardic, the other is Ashkenazi. And Ashkenazi is coming from Eastern Europe, and the Sephardics are coming from Northern Africa and Spain mm -hmm. and Portugal. And so um, my uh, I, I'm a Ashkenazi, okay, uh, uh, Jew. So because my grandparents, my paternal grandparents, are from Germany, and maternal are from Austria. Okay, yeah. So Yiddish then. Yiddish. So coming back to so Yiddish, the language was spoken by the Jewish people. Is spoken by the Jewish people coming from Eastern Europe, mm. and it's a kind of a mix between German and Hebrew. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, and you can kind of hear it in the in the sounds, the phonetically, the, the words sound a bit German. Yeah, 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 I've definitely noticed that. So we've created a list of words mm -hmm. that come from Yiddish that are, most of the words in the list are ones that are used regularly in English, like okay. just like totally normal parts of the English language. I would say that most of those ones, as a as an English person, obviously growing up in England, not in parts of New York where people might even say these words, yeah. as an English person, I am aware of and use many of the words in the list. So I would say those ones are probably ones that are part of general English rather than sort of specific dialect words or something um, in you know communities where people speak Yiddish. Well, yeah, it's I mean, like gone into the language to the extent that it's just like normal. In the, but they're across, in, the, in the dictionary now. Yeah, I mean, at least yeah. in the American dictionary, in the like Webster dictionary, which is, the, I guess, the American version. Um, and they're, yeah, they're yeah. official words now. Yeah, so in the Oxford English Dictionary. As well? Uh, Collins. Okay. Yeah, all those dictionaries contain many of these words. Okay. Yes. Okay, so did you hear Yiddish being used around yeah, you when you were growing um, up? I never knew anybody who spoke only in Yiddish. Like, for example, my grandparents didn't speak Yiddish, um, or at least not to an extent that they would speak it only, you know, that it would be, well, they were German speaking, so I, I think uh, it was so close that they, they just spoke German. And also my grandparents weren't necessarily that religious either. 
Um, but it's, uh, so yeah, I never knew somebody who spoke exclusively Yiddish, but they're just Yiddish words all over the place, mm. you know, and, and, and part of the reason is because there's, the words on this list are very specific. You know how there's some words in, in some languages that are just so good and so specific about and that they can't translate mm -hmm. them or, you know, and that's why um, Americans or just English speakers use Yiddish words sometimes because they're just so good and they're so specific about one idea, one concept that an English word wouldn't do the trick. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm Jewish. I was born and raised in the Jewish tradition. Um, but with a very kind of liberal idea already of, of Judaism, meaning our family wasn't orthodox or very strict when it came to, you know, for example, we weren't kosher. We, we didn't eat kosher food yeah. uh, growing up. And, but I was bar mitzvahed. So there's this whole idea about like, for me, Judaism is a religion, but it's also a culture. And so like, I feel culturally Jewish, but I don't, but I'm not religious today. Like I don't go to synagogue. Uh, and haven't for years. Naughty boy. I am a very bad Jew. And and uh, yet at the same time, I feel like there is something that's culturally that I, I come from this group of people, uh, especially the Ashkenazi group. So mm -hmm. what, I was, what I think is interesting is like, you put me in front of a Sephardic Jew who's coming from North Africa, I won't feel like we're the same culture mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're going to eat couscous, they're going to be... Um, uh, they're going to be happy, you know, and, and, and so it's, I feel like it's not part of our, <laughs> the same uh, genetic code. Right. Uh, right, right. And so, um, yeah, so I, I do feel culturally speaking, and, and I think Yiddish words contribute to that feeling of cultural identity, and uh, Yiddish is specifically Ashkenaz, meaning Eastern European Jew, mm -hmm. not uh, North African Jewish. Okay. So the words in this list come from uh, that so the Ashkenazi group yes, who speak Yiddish. Yeah, which is kind of, once again, this mix between German and uh, Hebrew. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So the top of the list is a word that everyone uses all the time. Yep. The word bagel. Bagel. A bagel. A bagel. So? A bagel is, is a round piece of bread, like a donut-shaped bread. Mm -hmm. But it's, so it's savory. It's not sweet like a donut. Mm -hmm. And it's... Boiled. It's originally boiled, then baked. Boiled, then baked. Boiled, then baked. So you take the dough and you put it in water, in boiling water, mm -hmm. hence boiling. Boiling. <laughs> and, then, and then you put it in the oven to to give it the brown kind of golden touch. So it is uh, It's interesting and it's very good. It's all over New York, all over most of America. You can get bagels anywhere. I'm saying that because in France, it's really hard to get bagels. Mm. You have to go to Picard, which is the frozen... Uh, or you go to Bagel Stein. Like there are very few places. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to complain about the bread selection here in France, but bagels is not necessarily their thing. Where you go anywhere in New York, and it's kind of like the go-to bread in a sense. Like you're going to make a sandwich, you use a bagel. If you want breakfast, you, you have like scrambled eggs on a bagel or bagel sandwich. And so it's all over the place in the, in the United bagels States. Bagels are over. It's just bagel, bagel, bagel. Bagel, bagel, bagel. Constantly. Like just more too popular many, too than, many bagels. than baguettes and, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can also just buy like a dozen bagels at, at places and just like have them for breakfast. It's just always. Twelve, 12 bagels for breakfast. Twelve bagels. <laughs> the twelve bagels of, of breakfast. Yeah. Um, okay. So very common. But I didn't know that came from uh, Yiddish originally. I guess. Who it, knew? Yeah, I, I guess the word does. I mean, logically it does. Um I'm not sure where the actual word comes from. But I don't really mind because they taste nice. What's your favorite? Yeah, it says a bagel, browned, uh, borrowed from Yiddish, bagel, spelled B-E-Y-G-L, ultimately from a diminutive of Middle High German, ring bracelet, which makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So well, it's the idea of a ring. What's your favorite uh, bagel filling? My favorite bagel filling would probably be, um, well, either the classic cream cheese. Uh, you know, scallion cream cheese and tomato is good. Scallion cream cheese yeah. and tomato. Because in, in, in the United States, you'll have all these like different kinds of cream cheese with different things in it. Um, and I also just like a tuna, tuna salad yeah. bagel. Yeah, good, yeah. good shout. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to. You shouldn't talk to people after it you know, cause you get because you get onions and it's, you have bad breath for the rest of the day. Yeah, but, yeah. but it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Okay, bake bagel. Next one, uh, pronounced, is it chutzpah? Chutzpah. 
Not chutzpah. No, chutzpah. Chutzpah. It's spelled C-H, but you pronounce it chutzpah. Yeah. Which means the nerve, the nerve of, of somebody. The like, audacity. The audacity. So uh, what chutzpah? Like if someone is um, talking back to his father, they say, oh, the, what chutzpah? The to, chutzpah on this kid. Yeah, on, on this kid to talk back to his father like that, to curse. Um or, you know, what a chutzpah, my friend asked me to pay him back for the coffee that he had to pay for. It was two euros. The what nerve chutzpah, the of nerve. this guy, the chutzpah the of this chutzpah. guy. And I love this word because it really, it hits home. It, it feels like it's what it's, what, what, you're, what, you're, what you're trying to spit, what you're, what you're trying to spit, what yeah, you're trying to say. Yeah, it is a bit like spitting that. It is, it is like chutzpah, chutzpah. chutzpah. Yeah. Yeah, what chutzpah. Sometimes the best words do have that sort of, um, I don't know what it is onomatopoeic yeah. quality to them yeah. or or a sort of physical quality like a lot of swear words have got that lots yeah. of t and k yeah. sort of sounds yeah. and chutzpah, Ch chutzpah is quite a good one so yeah. the chutzpah the nerve of this guy yeah. yes okay nice next one glitch glitch a glitch in the system a glitch in the matrix a bug is yeah. uh, something that went wrong a small thing that went wrong or, yeah you know and it's usually Talk, like today, it's usually used with electronics, mm -hmm. computers, phones. There's a glitch, or there's a glitch in the system, or there's a glitch in the matrix. Is that what it is? Yeah. So yeah, it's um, it's pretty common. I think it's uh, it's definitely an English word now. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent. It's maybe the most sort of the the word that has the most official English word today. Exactly. Yeah. That maybe that and bagel and a couple of others possibly, but like glitch is just so common. So common, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, next is uh, the word goy. A goy, which is the way Jews call anybody who's not Jewish. A goy is somebody who's uh, who's not Jewish, a non-Jew. Right. Yeah. So we have a word for everybody else. <laughs> just one word for one. everyone else, I, I not it, Jewish. I think it originally just means a guy. I think it comes from that, like yeah. the idea of Who just is a this? person. Just some it's, guy. It's some guy, so <laughs> meaning not Jewish. <laughs> because Jews are apparently in another level, in another realm. It's just, I, don't, I don't know exactly. It's Jewish, and then it's just some other some guys. Some other guys. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's goy. It's a here. goy. You say Gentile as well, though, don't Gentile you? Gentile is more, yeah, Gentile is also also means non-Jew. But among like among Jews, we would say more. Oh, he's a goy. Like, oh, he married a goy more than a gentile. A gentile is like a little bit too official or too pleasant. Okay, a goy is more uh, slang. Pejorative, Pejor and also slang. pejorative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, especially like married a goy is like a, the worst thing that can, that can happen. <laughs> uh, next is the word klutz. Great word. Oh, you stupid klutz! What have you done? It's a clumsy person. Yeah. Somebody who's clumsy is a klutz. Yeah, yeah. Who drops things, who trips over things. Knocks things over, breaks things. Yeah. Oh, you stupid klutz. Oh, yeah. I'm such a klutz. Sorry for being such and a klutz. And I wonder if klutz is not coming from the same root as clumsy. Yeah, clumsy, yeah, klutz. Clum klutz. Yeah. Yeah, they, they must be related in some way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there you go, a, cl a clumsy person. A lot of these I know already. Bagel, uh, chutzpah, glitch, uh, goy, klutz. I've known all of them so far. Mm -hmm. Next is another kind of obvious one, kosher. Kosher, which means... Well, uh, the, literally anything that, that uh, especially when we eat food, a food has to be kosher for the Jews, meaning there's no pork, you're not allowed to mix meat and milk, any dairy products, you can't eat um, like a, a cheeseburger because it's a mix of cheese and, and meat. And I guess mm. the idea is like, you don't want to take too much from the same animal. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, mm. don't, uh, don't abuse of the cow kind of idea. Uh, also, you know, shellfish there are lots of shellfish that are not kosher i don't know why because you know the why because they're shellfish this is the, the, this is a sean connery joke why does sean connery why does sean connery hate crabs because they're, they're shellfish uh, and uh, what time does sean connery arrive at wimbledon uh, tennis <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so that was uh, kosher. Now, have, you, have you done a thing on the ish? It's pretty specific to the English language. The what? ish, ish, like ten ish. Uh, oh, ish, like ish. Uh, it's, it's sort of approximately. Is, is it raining? Kind of ish. Yeah. Uh, have I ever done a bit on it in stand up? Yeah, have, have, no, no, no. Have you talked about it? On yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, many times. Ish. Because yeah. it's pretty specific. Is that is that I, only us then? You do, you guys don't do that? Because I was trying to think about like 
a French person asked me, how would you translate ish? And I was really like, there's no way in French, at least, which kind of made me think it's pretty specific to English, the ish. Ish. So it's kind of, what color is it? It's sort of a bluish, bluish, yeah. brownish sort of. Like approximately blue. Yeah, kind of. Kind is the, of blue, yeah. But in terms of what we can add after, like we put ish afterwards, I can't think of an equivalent thing that we can put after, only things before, kind of blue, sort yeah, of yeah. blue. You know, and I think when approximately, approximately, maybe. yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, there's the ish as a suffix that means a, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's a, it's a yeah, it's quite a unique tool thing. Yeah. yeah, that's in English. Uh, that one, of course. <laughs> yeah. So all right, what's the next word? Kvetch. 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 Yeah, it's to complain. <clears throat> right, I didn't yeah. know this one. Yeah, uh, but it's it means great. to complain. It's, it's complain to whine. Ah, stop your kvetching. Complaining, whining, moaning. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. what sort of context would that be used then? Could be about a you know kid complaining or uh, you know an old person on the on the bus. Oh, it's hot! I can't stand it. Oh, you stop your kvetching. Always kvetching. Always kvetching. Okay. Yeah. So pretty much any complaining, and I think this is also you know phonetically <clears throat> sounds good. Oh, kvetch to kvetch is to complain. I think what you should do at the end of this, when we've been through the list, is you should test me. Okay. You should look at the list and yeah. just like define one. I have to tell you which one it is. All right. Let's see if how many I forget. Yeah. Uh, next, lox. 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 L O X is smoked salmon. Very popular in New York cuisine. Probably in other major cities in the states. And mm -hmm. so it's smoked salmon, often cut very thinly, and you would put it on a bagel. A very common bagel and lox for breakfast, actually. Oh yeah. Uh, like in brunches, like lots of brunches in New York, kind of more upscale would have lox. Ah. Um, and so, or at the fish store, you can get lox. So it's smoked salmon. Smoked salmon. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if there's any difference between lox and smokes. Just any smoked salmon. I guess it's like a certain smoking technique mm -hmm. that makes it even more uh, lox delicious. <laughs> so, but yeah. That's what lox is. Okay, well, I didn't know that one either. Next is the word mensch, which I I, ha I have heard before. You've heard it I, mentioned. I've heard it mentioned. <laughs> um, so mensch, M E N S C H. Yeah, which means man. I think it literally means a man. Right, but but it means like um, a good guy, a really good guy, a good guy. Yeah, a good guy that we all respect. Yeah, uh, he's a real mensch. Yeah, a real mensch. Like, yeah, someone who's a good person. And often it's used ironically. Uh huh. Like, uh, you know, if, if I want to make you feel like I'm a good person, it's like, hey, you see, I, uh, I, I bought you some flowers. Yeah, yeah, you're such a mensch. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I would go, you know, oh, yeah, I gave that homeless guy five cents. Oh, yeah, what a mensch. What a mensch you are. Yeah, what a, you're such a mensch. Mm hmm. So it's often used ironically. But yeah, I mean, a mensch is a stand up guy. Okay, yeah. you're a real mensch. You're a real mensch. Thanks a lot. You're a real mensch. Yeah. Uh, next is mashugna. Mashugna. When I'd never heard of this before. Crazy. Mush crazy. Mashugna. Well, mashugna is a crazy person. Yeah. Um. Or yeah, you could say, oh, he's he's all mashugna or mashuga, uh, and and it means craziness, like bonkers, bananas. Yeah. Like, we have lots of words in English too. Yeah, yeah bananas. bananas, crazy, nuts, bonkers, yeah. batty, balmy. Yeah. Yeah, and mashugana. Yeah, and mashugana. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that's really made its way in, into English. No, I'd never heard that before. Uh, never. This seems very strange. Yeah, this might be uh, something that I've heard thanks to my community that I grew up in. Yeah, I guess so. Uh. How is it? How would it be used then? Can you give me a, an example sentence? Um well, look, he ran out of the house without any clothes on. He's all mashugana. Okay. A person who acts foolishly. Yeah. This, uh, okay. Someone who does crazy, crazy foolish things. Foolish yeah. things. Okay. He climbed up the building without a rope. He's mashugana. He's mashugana. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, never heard that one. Next one I have heard. Oi. 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 Oi vey. Oi vey. It's a sigh. It's like, uh, oh my God. Yeah. I guess the equivalent would be, oh my God. Mm -hmm. uh, in English. Yeah. Like oh, the, my God. It's a Jewish version of, oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oy vey. Uh, like, look. Oh, oh it's raining again. Oy it's vey. raining again. Oy vey. Yeah. And it's usually nothing that dramatic. Yeah. You know, it's it's not like, oh, that person is being m murdered. Oy vey. Oy vey. No, it's more just like, is, oh, oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah. would be a good okay. translation. All right, then. Uh, flying through the list. We Next, we have the word putts. 
So we had klutz before. Yeah, klutz, which is a clumsy person. A putz literally means a penis, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah? But it's any, like, a jerk, I would say, like... Stupid putz. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a mix of loser and asshole, <laughs> and it's kind of <laughs> relatively vague. Not a great thing to be. Not You don't want to be a putz. You definitely do not want to be a putz. No. A stupid or worthless person is the the official google <laughs> official google definition the official google definition a is stupid or worthless, a stupid or worthless i'm not some two-bit putz who doesn't know the difference between uzo and dom per dom perignon. perignon yeah yeah okay yeah so a putz is, okay it's stupid putz so what do you think i am some kind of putz yeah so yeah stupid person okay there's a few words for stupid person in yeah. this list and i'm going to talk about this comedian named gary gullman who's an uh, an american Jewish com comedian mm -hmm. and he has he's uh, I forget which bit it is but he just starts saying oh the guy was a putz a klutz a schlemiel a, 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 sh um, schnook. a schnook and he says yes uh, uh, Eskimos have a hundred ways a hundred words for snow Jews have a hundred words for loser right and so it's true <laughs> I'm realizing that on this list of Yiddish words lots of them just mean loser so we, we, so the next one after putz is schlemiel yeah 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 which is in a similar schlemiel I'm adding some to the list here we've got sh schnook as well and schmuck and schmuck here too which okay. I think ironically or Schmuck also means a penis. Really? I think both schmuck and putz. Yeah, but schmuck and putz are always used to talk about a person. He's yeah. a stupid schmuck. Yeah. You look at you, you putz. Yeah, but it's, then, it's very rarely used to actually talk about. But then you do have a word uh, for sh for penis, and that is schlong. Schlong, that's he true. He yeah. got out his schlong. Yeah, which usually means a big there's a, an idea of a big penis the sense that it's large snake it's a, yeah sh 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 long. Sh long coming from snake so yeah <laughs> um uh, so schmuck is yes yeah, schmuck a foolish or contemptible person right so yeah. so we've we've just had uh we had klutz first the clumsy yeah. person clumsy putz person. is stupid idiot yeah schlemiel schlemiel yeah what about uh, schlemiel i think is also kind of a mix between a klutz like <laughs> Uh, and a, like a, a, an idiot, it's definitely. Um, <laughs> I thought it's between a putz and a klutz. Between the two, yeah, you've got a yeah. Schle schlemiel. Yeah, yeah, really. Putz can be more um, like an a mean person. I feel schlemiel is like a pitiful person. Right, right, the, right. It, Pathetic. Yeah, a stupid, pitiful. awkward, or unlucky person. So I guess the idea of like unlucky is like yeah, like it's not their fault really. Yeah, it's pitiful. Like you have pity on this person, right? Which this links to schnook. <laughs> which is which is even more uh, pitiful because it's like somebody who falls for everything, right? Like a, a loser in the sense, like he'll he'll <laughs> follow uh, his a, a guy around just because he's looking for affection, or uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he'll he'll fall for any scam. Oh, a schnook. That's a schnook. So a schnook, schnook is somebody yeah. who's totally gullible, gullible who will fall yeah. for anyone's shtick. Yeah. And uh, a schlemiel, schlemiel is just a pathetic loser. Yeah. <laughs> and a putz is just a loser. Yeah. Okay. You see, there are lots of subtle differences. Different shades of... Different of, shades of loser. Yeah, I see. Different... hundred... No, fifty shades of putz. <laughs> putz, schlemiel, schnook, schmuck. Okay. Yeah. Different words for, for people. Schlong as well, the penis there, yeah. of course. Don't mm -hmm. forget that one, listeners. Yeah, very important. And then um, some other words. This one is one of my favorite ones yes. that I do know. Yes. And that's schlep. Schlep. So, so to, you, you can schlep something. You can schlep yourself. It's hard to define. It's like... To schlep something is like to carry it, to haul, and it impl implies that it's heavy. Mm -hmm. So it's it's annoying and difficult. Yeah. So you can schlep a backpack, you can schlep a, a box. Yes. But also it means to travel far, or at least in, in, a, in a difficult way. Yeah. Like, uh, like I'm not going to schlep to the other side of Paris just to... Uh, Deliver yeah. this letter just or whatever. Just deliver this letter or just to have a coffee. So, yeah, schlep. Schlep is this idea of uh, traveling slash carrying something that's annoying 
and heavy and it, difficult. It's perfect because that is a journey that we have to make quite a lot. We, yeah. we have to do this all the time. Half of our, our trips are really annoying, inconvenient and difficult, especially if you're carrying something heavy, yeah. you're traveling a long distance. It's a real schlep. It's a real schlep. You can say it's a noun and a verb. Yeah. You can schlep to somewhere, you could, meaning it's you're implying that it's either far or annoying to get there. Yeah. You can schlep something. Yeah. You can so I'm going to I'm gonna have to schlep this bag around all day. Meaning carry. And it's such a schlep to get to the airport from yeah. here. Yeah. It's meaning it's an annoying tr voyage trip. That's perfect because that's yeah, it's something a great word. so specific in its meaning yeah. and so common as well. And but so right. I mean, like there's in the right in the sense precise. Like there's no other word, especially in English, that is, that has that sense that has that idea of going somewhere and it's annoying <laughs> yeah so it's a great addition to the language yeah uh, we use that one in my family quite a lot um and so okay schlep we also got the word schlock hmm which means something cheap yeah like maybe just some kind of rubbish like loads of products that you'd find in some terrible cheap roadside shop yeah kind of like anything that's you want to give away like junk Yes. Junk, I guess, would be good. So, yeah, schlock. Often, like, um, yeah, cheapo products that you're yeah. trying to get rid of. Yeah. I've got all this kind of, uh, all this schlock. Uh, did we talk before about how schlock could be also stuff that you could do, like comedy or movies? Yeah. Like Hollywood, sh Hollywood schlock, like the sort of the yeah, generic rubbish that they do in Hollywood rubbish. films. Rubbish is a good word too. Yeah, like something that's not quality, like something that is not worth watching or mm -hmm. worth uh, listening to. And yeah, junk is good, yeah. Okay. Also, anything that's, yeah, cheap, uh, not of good quality. Yeah, 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 yeah. The next one's great. Next one, the word um, schmooze, which is a schmooze. verb, to yeah. schmooze, yeah. schmoozing. It means to chat. It means to, to chat, but with like the idea of making connections or getting somewhere, uh, often like with a cocktail in hand. Yeah. So it's kind of just like, oh, to schmooze is, is to smooth talk and kind of for your career, business um, yeah. goals. Like so, giving someone your card, you know, that, that kind of... The kind of thing that would happen at, in Hollywood a lot where yes. producers are schmoozing with each other. They're, yeah, exactly, sort of going, they're networking, networking charming yeah. people, doing deals um, and flirting maybe and drinking cocktails, looking very glamorous and schmoozing with all of the other producers at the Hollywood it's great because party. It doesn't, yeah, because it's, it's also very specific because it's beyond just chit-chat. It's beyond talking. It's, yeah, it's uh, making connections. It's... Networking, yeah, I guess mm -hmm. would be the, the, the official. Google says, talk with someone in a lively and friendly way, typically in order to impress or man manipulate them. Do you have to schmooze ever as a comedian in Paris? Any schmoozing? Yeah, I, I'm not a good schmoozer, though. Like, no? I'm not... It's not my uh, my strength. It's not... Uh, some people... I, I, can, I, I love watching good schmoozers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a few friends who are good schmoozers who are just like, you can see... Uh, how they start and like all of a sudden they know like what joke to place but also they know how to eventually get to mm -hmm. uh, a good contact you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, you know get the person's number or just say oh you know I, I, I'm working on this you should check this out kind of thing so yeah I'm not a good schmooze but yeah it's, it's important in our industry I guess like in most entertainment industries it's good to know how to schmooze yes I would say so all right so <laughs> Next one is schmutz. 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 It's it's like any dirty thing, uh, often like on your face, like you have something, you have some oh, yeah. schmutz on your 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 shirt or your your face on your cheek. You got some schmutz. I've never heard of this one before. Yeah, it's it's pretty common, at least uh, in New York. Just some dirt, some generic dirt, dirt. dirt. Anything dirty that you want to get rid of. You've got some schmutz on your face. Can yeah, you just or like it schmutz off? on your computer screen. Yeah, I just got to clean up this schmutz on my phone after yeah, I dropped it. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like the English equivalent would be like what? I guess the thing is just shit. shit. Yeah, just some shit. shit. There's got just some shit. sorry, got some shit on you. Got some shit on the side of your mouth. You got uh, some stuff. Yeah, but stuff. stuff doesn't necessarily imply dirty. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So shit. I mean, uh, uh, it, we use the word shit to mean obviously poo. Yeah, uh, but we also use the word shit to so mean just dirty, dirty stuff. Thing, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Okay, so uh, uh, what was it again? Schmutz. Schmutz, Sch- yeah, schmutz. 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 I'm going to have to remember all this, schmutz. listeners, for yeah. the test. And I and I like say I say to my kids, that's mm-hmm. one of the, you know, because they often have schmutz on clothing and or body parts. I see. Yeah. Okay, so you're handing down your vocab yes. to the younger generation. Yeah. Uh, uh, shtick. Your shtick. So we were talking about shtick before. Uh, before we started recording, yeah, and so you, uh, comedians can have shtick. So you have shtick. shtick. Yeah, shtick is so. This is one I know as well. It's a sort of distinguishing style of doing comedy. It's um, normally yeah. for comedy, right? I think is so. It? But I'm seeing like the definition here says uh, feature or business. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's often associated with comedy. It's like, what's your persona? What's your style of comedy? It's style, your way of telling a joke. Um, or your routine. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's his shtick? Oh, his shtick is that he's uh, he's dirty. He's a dirty comic. Where he ins- he insults women. That's his shtick. Is just he does jokes about his kids. You know, like mm-hmm. kind of like the 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 theme or the style of comedy he does is his shtick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Do you have a shtick? Uh, yeah, I guess I do. I guess it's like observational. Um, but I'm trying to just move uh, move away from that, getting to more personal stuff. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's 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 hard to say. It's uh, I'm inside of myself, so it's hard to. Say. I think it's it's not an, e- an easy question to answer. What your shtick is? Uh, it should be it probably. It's, it would help if I knew what my shtick was. <laughs> but um, you're you're you have a shtick? I don't know really. Yeah. So, you know, it's, again, it's hard for me to tell. But I have this shtick that I would like to have, which is the sort of um stream of consciousness surreal um improvising kind of comedian yeah. who's kind of yeah doing ad-libbing. this ad-libbing lots yeah. of ad-libs lots of sort of slightly surreal yeah. imaginative stuff that that's what true. that's the it's kind true. of thing it's, i'd like yeah to i was going to say like there's definitely like an absurd uh, aspect to your observations and and your style of jokes and uh, that's what i appreciate Mm, yeah, that's the sort of thing I go for. I yeah, think that great. kind of Monty Python, Eddie yeah. Izzard kind of stuff. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, all right, shtick. Yeah, your shtick is you know you you observe very carefully the whole sort of differences between your culture and French mm-hmm. culture or Parisian culture. Yeah. And over the years, I've seen you do so many bits that they've stuck in my head. <laughs> Um, like I don't know what, like you know, doing stuff about learning French and forgetting English words. Yeah, yeah. And you know, like you, your brain just says to you, you know, you're just gonna have to let grapefruit go. Yeah, there's a limited amount of space in my brain for more than one language. Yeah, yeah. It's like when I learn a new French word, it pushes its English counterpart overboard. Yeah, this is always the dark ocean of my unconscious. This has always horrified me. You see. Yeah. That I that I would lose all my English words. Hasn't that happened? No, no, no. no it hasn't. Yeah, but I haven't really picked up much many <laughs> French, French words. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, that joke often sticks with me, and various others that you've done over the years. You've kind of described the experiences that I've had living and working in in Paris. Um, so shtick, okay, comic sort of style. Yeah, let's say style. Yeah, uh, moving on to another noun, schmaltz. Schmaltz, uh, schmaltzy cheese, is the adjective. Cheese, cheese in the sense um, over sentimental. Yes. Uh, forced. Like some forced mo- emotion. Some movies they're just full of schmaltz, yeah. especially at the end. Especially yeah. Hollywood movies, they yeah. they really turn up the schmaltz all yeah, the way up to eleven. Put, like schmaltzy music on to make you f- to force the emotion. And a happy yeah. ending gets yeah. tacked on. Yeah. Can you think of any sh- sort of schmaltzy? films uh, any of steven spielberg yeah i films? think, I think I'm, I'm, even though i'm a fan of spielberg it, it, his uh pro- like the if he, if, he, if there's going to be a problem with a, a spielberg movie it's going to be that it's going to be over sentimental too obvious or uh cheesy yeah you know where just the hero will finally you know there'll be a close-up on his face with a dramatic music like forced a little yeah. bit and and i feel like yeah so some uh Spielberg stuff could could be like that. Um, E.T. is a bit schmaltzy at yeah, the end. Yeah, like, they yeah. like fly off on their bikes and stuff. Yeah, it's a bit bit rich. Uh, I'm trying to think of what other. I remember like uh, Saving Private Ryan, like at the end, mm-hmm. like when you come back to him as an adult or something. Well, yeah, when when it's it's when when Tom Hanks is is gonna get killed and he says to Ryan, "Hey Ryan," and Ryan's like, "What?" And he goes, "Earn this." Yeah, yeah, like. <sighs> Earn this. Yeah. 
like that meaning you've got to live your life and really you know uh be happy and earn the sacrifice that was made to yeah earn this and it goes very schmaltzy yeah he, he's good at, at schmaltz uh sometimes i like it sometimes i don't like mm-hmm. sometimes i i buy into it sometimes i don't yeah 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 shul shul is synagogue oh oh i it's see another word for synagogue shul s-h-u-l i'm going to shul <clears throat> Is is yeah? I'm going to to pray in at the synagogue. Sounds like I'm going to school, and it might come from school. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's because well, you know back in the day when you would learn in church or you would learn in in your religious uh, place of worship. So it might come from the same word, school and shul. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Very interesting. From it, a Germanic origin. Yeah, it's an interesting word as well, school, because yeah. there's not many that not many words that have CH yeah, CH that are pronounced k- like a K, yeah. School yes. schedule, yeah. arguably if you speak American English. Yeah. Schedule. Schedule. Yeah. yeah. Uh so okay, shul meaning synagogue. Yeah. But maybe school in a way as well. Yeah. Okay. Schwitz so I didn't. By the way, I didn't know shul. Yeah. I didn't know shul is pretty specific. I mean, like you're not going to hear it outside of the Jewish community. Like yeah. I don't think anybody in any, well, especially because you're talking about the synagogue. Like it's something that I heard only in the community. Like I, I don't think okay. I've heard any movie or any sitcom that talked about shul. But the next word is maybe the sort of word you might see in a film if there's like a like a Billy Crystal film and he's playing a sort of very Jewish yeah. character. I'm schwitzing. Yeah, schwitz. 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 It's sweating to sweat. Schwitzing. It's it's hot in here. I'm schwitzing. I'm schwitzing up here. Okay. And so it's, yeah, it's just it's just sweating, and okay. so it's a verb. To, okay. To schwitz. Hmm. Schwitz. I can't really see any sweat and schwitz. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Well, the S W and here's S V S H S H V Schwitz sweat. Yeah, they they must be related. The other can yeah, be. yeah, because obviously a lot of words in English come from Germanic. Yeah, uh, spiel or spiel, isn't your it? Spiel, your spiel. Spielberg is kind of like Spielberg is like your speech. What's your spiel? It's kind of like a pitch. It's kind of like a. A pitch like a movie pitch, like kind of your, 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 your like a discourse, presentation, your a presentation. discourse, yeah. yeah. Some stuff you say is yeah. your spiel. It's your spiel. So you can have good spiel and bad spiel, yeah. spiel can't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, uh, also, it's kind of linked with your routine, like, you, like, uh, in the, like, a, I imagine like a traveling salesman. He has his spiel, like the same speech he says every time when he wants to get you to buy whatever you're selling like that's yeah. a spiel or whenever anyone says to me so what's your podcast about and then i give the usual 30 second spiel yeah. about what it is kind of like has this idea of like prepared something that you've like prepared that you repeat often. some information that's stock that's always prepared in yeah. advance what what's written on the back of a book don't they write spiel on the back of a book I you guess, know the yeah. you know you, t- you get the book you look at the cover like the title the summary of the book? and you read the spiel on the yeah, back yeah, yeah. yeah that I've definitely heard it used like that yeah yeah spiel is for the yeah. the stuff that's written on the back of so the book so it's kind of like yeah I guess a speech uh, it's like a sort of uh, some, functional information delivered in the in a speech I'm normally gonna, I'm going to see what the real definition yeah, is. yeah okay what uh, Google S- spiel meaning an elaborate or Glib speech or story, typically one used as a salesperson. Yeah, yeah. sale little, the sales speech or yeah. sales pitch. Yeah, yeah. Like the spiel on the back of the book is there to kind of make you buy it. Yeah, you know. Okay, that's nice, and I knew that one. I didn't know Schwitz. I didn't know Schul. I didn't know Sh. Um, sh- uh, uh, sh- Schnook. Schlemiel. <laughs> um, and uh, locks. You didn't know. Okay, so we've got a few left here. Uh, Tuchus. Tuchus. And, and, uh, and Tush. Tush and Tuchus. Okay. Both mean the butt. The, the butt, the bum. The, the behind, the bottom. yes, the bottom. So Tuchus uh, is more, I guess, y- Yiddish. Tush is very common in the United States, especially when you're talking to kids, because it's like a nice way. Of saying, like, move uh, your bum out of the yeah, way, move, move your, your tush. Yeah, it's like, I guess uh, the equivalent would be bum. Yeah, you, okay. Your tush or tushy. As well, right. Yeah, that's tushy. just very commonly used. It's pretty common. But yeah. tuchus is very specific to sort of yeah. Well, Yiddish. just to pr- pronounce it is harder. Tuchus. It's it sounds more German and you know Yiddish. So yeah. I guess that's why it's less common. But yeah, tush is more easy. 
uh, like push, just tush. Tush, yeah. Um, I always thought that the tuchus was a specific part of a chicken because I heard an interview. <laughs> the butt of the chicken. <laughs> yeah, because in a chicken you've got like the, 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 the legs and whatever yes. and the breast and stuff. Yeah. And there is also a kind of a flap at the yeah, back, yeah. which is like quite a nice meaty part. Yeah. And that's that's, that's the tuchus. <laughs> the butt, yeah, the, I guess it's the tuchus of the chicken. Yeah. So I heard that yeah. in an interview once and I always thought that tuchus was, was, the, specific, was specifically the chicken's bum the chicken's in bum. a roast chicken. But it's no, it's, it's anyone's bum. It's anyone's yeah. bum, yeah. Your tuchus. Okay. Um, a couple of other S words here. Yeah. Uh, schmooze no we did that we did schmooze, we did schmooze. yeah uh, schnoz, schnoz or schnozzle yeah which is a nose a big nose big nose yeah. look at his schnoz yeah usually means uh someone who has a big nose and it's uh yeah it's it's a good word too i like it because it sounds like oh, what a schnoz he's got um yeah you heard it because uh you said I've I've heard it before. I mean, talking I'm, about Ringo Starr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen some interview with the Beatles in America, or maybe in one of their movies. Someone mentions Ringo's schnozzle. Yeah, uh, meaning his big nose. Yeah. So I'd only know. I only knew it from that. I knew it was a kind okay. of a bit of American slang. Yeah. Um, not the sort of thing that gets used every day. Oh, it's in coming England. from snout. Snout, really. Yeah. You see, perhaps schnauz. from perhaps from schnauz or schnauz of schnauz. German. Schnauz, yeah. Schnauz. Schnauz. Schnauz meaning yeah. nose. Yeah. Okay. And then stumm. Keep stumm. Yeah. Stumm is quiet. Silence. Shut up. Don't say anything. Keep stumm. It's between you and me. Stumm coming from mute, apparently, in German. Okay. That's what they say. Right. Keep stumm. Yeah. So that's a very common one. Heard that one lots of times. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing on the list here, we've got this thing called schm reduplicate reduplication yeah Shm reduplication which doesn't you have to give the example so it's clear so reduplication is when you basically say the same thing twice yeah so uh but shm reduplication is when you in the second one you add shm before it so yeah. always talking about your podcast all the time podcast this podcast that podcast schmodcast yeah which kind of just belittles anything yeah like Oh, look at this pen. Oh, pen, pen man. man. It's like a dismissive yeah. way of referring to something. Yeah. Oh, look yeah. at my Ferrari. Ah, oh, Ferrari. 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 You can't do it. Yeah, it's really hard to do it with something. Yeah, like the new iPhone's come out. iPhone 16 is, is coming out. I'm going to go and get the new iPhone. iPhone oh, iPhone. iPhone, shm iPhone. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's easier. Um, well, there you go. I think we've just done probably... A decent number of words that are commonly used. Yeah. Uh, we've got a couple of others, actually. We didn't do these two. Oh, okay. Is that important? Verklempt. Verklempt. Very means, German sounding. Yeah. It's as emo emotional, like especially emotional. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Over, emo uh, like, uh, what's the word? Like, overcome Sh with emotion. Choked up. Choked kind of, up, yeah. Like, you know, can't Oops. when you... Yeah. <laughs> it could be positive or negative. Uh, you know, I'm verklempt because I'm proud of my child, or I'm verklempt because I just uh, won an Oscar, yeah, or something. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. Like, yeah, when when the people win an Oscar and they can't really talk because they're overcome with uh, emotion is verklempt. That's verklempt. Yeah. And then yenta. Yenta is a, a chat chatterbox, meaning a woman who gossips. Oh, I see. A right. Yeah, who, who gossips, like the village gossip. Like, don't tell her she's a real yenta. She's a real yenta. She's going to tell the whole village. Okay. Kind of thing. I see. All right, you know what? What we need to do now is you need to test me on these things. All right, yeah. So see if you can do that. See, okay, see if you, you want the definition the and you have to say the word? Yeah, or I, won't, I, say... I won't look at the screen. You okay. just scroll through them. Just give, yeah. me a, give me a definition or some example. So I'll give you the definition. And I have to, and I have you to have give to, you the word. You have to give me the word. Okay. Yeah, let's see if I can actually remember any of these things. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, oh, dear. I'm um, starting easy. Oh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oi, vey. Yeah, good. That's, that's uh, too easy. Um... Oh, this computer's not working. They must have some sort of bug. There's a glitch in That's my computer. A glitch. Yeah. Don't marry him. He's a non Jew. D don't marry him. He's a goy. Good. Uh, 100% so far. Yeah. Uh, don't marry him because he's a loser. He's a putz. Yeah, good. There are several <laughs> ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, oh my God! He dropped the glass again. What a what a klutz! Yeah, I can't order a cheeseburger because that's not kosher. It just ain't kosher. Yeah. I was going to say before that that kosher is one that's used a lot 
in British English too. You might hear sort of Cockneys using the word kosher in a gangster movie. Yeah, it means anything that's correct. Any, uh, what would kosher be like? Yeah, correct and acceptable, acceptable and by the that's rules. Right. Yeah, by the rules and yeah, stuff and, like that. And by by definition, not kosher. You say, oh, that's not kosher. See, something's it's, fishy. It's something's not, not cool. Right. It's not the done thing. Yeah, something's not right. So you might hear Cockney gangsters like Jason Jason Statham. Statham, just thing. you know, don't do that. It ain't kosher. Yeah. See, um, so yeah. Anyway, that was kosher. Yeah. Next. Um. Oh, s- stop complaining so much. Stop. Stop kvetching all the time. Kvetch. Yeah. Kvetch. Kvetch. Kvetching, good. What's kvetching? I don't know. I don't know. Kvetching. It's probably a Yiddish word. Too. Yeah, maybe. Uh, oh, that guy, is, uh, that guy's climbing the Eiffel Tower. He's a... A uh, real schnook or schlemiel? <laughs> no, mashugana. Uh, mashugana. Crazy, I've got crazy. crazy. Yeah, crazy. okay, sh- mashugana. Oh, I got it one wrong. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, he just falls for anything. What a what a schnook! There you go. Yeah, schnook. But he'll believe anything. Yeah. Oh my God, it's hot in here. I'm I'm schwitzing. I'm schwitzing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got a knock on my door, and this guy was trying to sell me something, and he had this incredibly long spiel. Yeah. Uh, watch out! If you trip over that, you might fall on your. On your tuchus, your, your tuchus. tush, yeah, your tush, your tuchus. I, I think I would like the, to thank the academy. Oh, what's it called? Uh, this is making me so. Uh, I can't remember. Verklempt. 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 Yeah. yeah. Such a weird word. Yeah. I, another reason why this is well known is because there was this SNL Saturday Night Live sketch or several sketches by Mike Myers mm-hmm. called Coffee Talk yeah. where he imitated like a 55 year old Jewish like cliche of the Jewish woman mm-hmm. like I guess New York Jewish woman and and she, and she would use the character would be like using all of these Yiddish words it's like oh I'm so verklempt and um, and it kind of like became very popular okay. at least like with our generation okay all right uh, I'm going to pray so I'm going to go to uh, shul. Yes. Uh, synagogue. Yeah, synagogue. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. You open the door for me. You're such a... Oh, yeah. You're such a, you're a mensch. Yeah, you're such a mensch. Yeah, open the door for me. You would a mensch. Yeah, wow, what a mensch. Uh-huh. Uh, we're pretty good, huh? Wow, she's just going to tell everybody about that. What a... Oh, someone who... Yent, yenta? Yenta, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um... Could you believe that after uh, I paid for his coffee, he came up and he had the he had the chutzpah, yeah, to ask me for for, for dessert. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it's pretty good. Huh? I think I got most of them, didn't yeah, I? Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, right. you did pretty well, listeners. I wonder how you did as well in that little memory test. And I'm curious to know also if any of these words have worked their way into other languages. I wonder if that's possible. Hmm. Wouldn't be surprised. I haven't heard any of them in French. No. Uh, kosher? I don't think... Well, kosher, yeah, but they have their own word, kasher. Right. Um, but I don't... Like, I know a little bit of Spanish. I haven't heard any of these words in Spanish. I think also, like, English, especially American English, seeing that there are so many immigrants, is a little bit more open to accepting words from other languages. Uh, and so I think that's part of the reason why they're actually like used now and they're considered English words. Because mm, mm. I feel like, you know, I'm saying that because like you know, the, there's the Academy Francaise, which like wants to protect the French language from exterior invasion. Right, right. Where I feel like uh, American English, I don't know if it's the same for British English, but it seem, seems a little bit more open. Yeah. Like it's okay if, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Immigrants have brought over this word that's so widely used that it's practically now an English word. A lot of these are used in English as well. We've got sort of Jewish communities in England, like parts of London, for yeah. example, where you would hear a lot of these words being used too in families sort yeah. of like yours. But like any any British person would understand some of these though. Yeah, right? a lot of these uh, would just be understood by by most British people, including like, like keep stum, yeah. um, spiel. to schmooze, uh, spiel, um, glib, Glib, no glitch. glitch yeah. Um. Uh. Uh. What else? Uh, schlock. Um. Klutz. Klutz. Putz. Uh. Oy vey, mensch. Kosher. Uh. Chutzpah and bagel. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. That's a good deal of them already. Well known. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not bad. All right. 
Uh, Sebastian, thank you very much for coming on oh, thank you. and talking to us about this. It's been very interesting. Yeah. Um, how, uh, would you like to take this opportunity to promote yourself? This is going to be published probably in May sometime, maybe okay. late May. So if you've got something in the pipeline. Yeah, well, I'm prob I'll probably be hosting my uh, English comedy night in Paris called the New York Comedy Night. Uh, you can check uh, us out. Luke often performs on that. And I also perform in French all over Paris and all over France. So I will probably have a date if you do speak a little bit of French on June 3rd uh, in Paris. June at, the 3rd? At, at, at La Gaîté Montparnasse, near Montparnasse. Okay, which yes. is a nice big theater. Yes. You're doing a special one-off. A one-off. One-off one -off, yeah. one -off show. One-off show there. Uh, and that's it. Well, I'm on uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And I, I, I'm on TikTok, but no one. Nobody knows that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I don't have that many people who follow me. Sebastian Marks, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for thank coming you. back thank onto you. Luke's English Podcast. It was a pleasure.